Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to talk about the latest from Ferrari's special projects program, the new BR20. Now this is based on the Ferrari GTC 4 Lasso V12, a completely bespoke creation, a unique one-off and a very special car with some awesome design details and highlights and a few unique touches that you might not yet have realized. I've always been a big fan of the Ferrari special projects and with the BR20 having now been launched, let's take a look in detail at this new car. A quick background on the Ferrari Special Projects program. If you're not familiar with it, these cars are all one-offs. They are designed with the customer involved in the entire process, taking one of the base Ferrari models, let's say, and making it into something completely unique. The customer is part of that design process all the way through to delivery. And as a result, this is something that's only possible for Ferrari's most VIP customers. Customers who have, let's say, the Corsa Clienti cars, the F1 cars, the XX program cars, have numerous different Ferrari special cars and have purchased probably just about everything throughout time. It is a very special privilege to be able to do this, to do the coach building process. And you can imagine that each customer of one of these special projects is somebody who has that Ferrari collection and has been part of the brand, probably racing in the Challenge Series, the GT3 cars, GTEs, whatever it might be. Now the BR20, is actually quite unique. We've had a look at some of these cars before, the likes of the SP12 EC, Eric Clapton's car many years ago, one of the biggest videos, in fact, on the Shmi 150 channel. Recently, the SP38 Debra and a couple of others, often based on the mid-engine platform cars. But the BR20, and the name, by the way, is not explained, but I presume BR will be the initials, perhaps, of the owner. 20, maybe it was due to be finished in 2020. This is just a guess. We'll find out, perhaps, down the line. Maybe not. But this car is based on the GTC Paul Lasso V12, which means the GT, the naturally aspirated V12 engine, with the four-wheel drive system, but being a two-door coupe with a significantly changed roofline. Now, as you look at the car, you can see that this has been heavily, heavily changed from the base GTC Paul Lasso, a car that I know very well. I used to have one here in my collection, of course. Sadly, no longer, although I'd love a V12 Ferrari very soon. But this features that same power plant. So the 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12, 690 horsepower, plenty of poke, four wheel drive system, a very clever system, in fact, along with the seven speed dual clutch gearbox. But the bodywork is heavily changed. In fact, it's more reminiscent of the 812 Superfast, although features various design elements that actually come from Ferraris back in the 19. 50s and the 1960s, the likes of the 410 SA and the 500 Superfast, for example. I think it is a stunning looking thing. At the front, it is familiar to the GTC 4 Lasso. The large openings, of course, in the grille with thinner daytime running lights and thinner headlights, which give the impression of an even longer bonnet than the regular Lusso. And it's always a gigantic bonnet to begin with because that V12 is actually positioned just behind the front axle, which means sitting in the car, you're very, very far back. But of course, this is very different to the bread van style, the shooting brake style of the Lusso. You can see the bodywork, extensive use of carbon fiber, but very, very different. New wheels, in fact, worn by the car as well. But the significant change is down to this roof line and what it houses inside as a result. So as you're looking at it, effectively from the top of the A pillars in front of the driver, you have this very, very smooth curve, this flying buttress that runs all the way down towards the rear deck, towards the very tail of the car where it just curves up with a little integrated spoiler. You can see the openings towards the sides over the rear arches, similar in some ways to the likes of the flying buttresses found on the 599 GTB a decade or so ago, but with air being channeled down through that section and released out between or under that lip spoiler towards the very rear. On the side profile, you also have these fairly well-styled cues down towards the bottom. Carbon fiber that runs down, I think, shrinking the size of the car, perhaps. It's a couple of centimeters longer than the standard Lusso, well, three inches, which is actually about eight centimeters longer, most of which is all found in that rear overhang, so what you're looking at towards the very back of the car. But what I think is particularly intriguing about this is if we take a look at the interior, because this is no small change. In fact, inside the BR20, it is now a strict two-seater with the traditional heritage style leather, as you can see, lots of leather, dual tone brown leather, in fact, finished with carbon fiber. And then the rear is no longer with two seats, but instead with this rear shelf 
more for the storage and more to do with the shape and the lines and how the car appears. They've had to introduce the glass found on the 812 Superfast to fit with these shapes for the rear window and for the quarter lights, for example. But instead of having those seats, and normally in the Lusso, there is quite a substantial amount of space in the back. It is quite comfortable even for a long drive with a fully grown adult back there. But in this case, it's much more about the storage. And you can see how this is done with that brown leather finished with the carbon fiber inserts, a very traditional look, almost a look that seems in some ways inspired by yachts and that side, that side of things. There's a support brace that runs across the back, no doubt, to keep the car in terms of its strength and rigidity, but much more about the storage course accessed through the rear hatch but about being able to put in more luggage i believe there's an extra shelf as well found below that top surface should the space be needed for loading or for transporting anything within the car up front it remains true to the gtc4 lusso we still have the central infotainment system those floating controls for auto reverse for example and launch you have the three sections to the dashboard, the very prominent central rev counter going over 8,000 RPM with the dual digital screens flanking it on either side. You've got the carbon fiber LED driver zone for the steering wheel, a must have option in my mind on any Ferrari, but then finished with this much more heritage style look throughout the interior. And in fact, it's called the Testa di Moro leather and finished with silver cross stitching, in fact, to contrast against it, along with oak trim with carbon inserts found pretty much anywhere that you can detect that through the interior of the cabin. So it's much more this fast back roof line as opposed to the more traditional style of the Lusso, that bread van style, that you know four seater, but three door hatchback. I always think it's quite fun that Ferrari have had the FF and the Lusso, I had the FF before the Lusso and had these very unusual cars. Alas, no more the Lusso is out of production, but of course the expected SUV is going to be coming not too long down the line. And I'm quite interested in what that's going to be like as well. To touch on a few more of the details on the exterior, the rear view of this, the rear three quarters, is one of my favorite angles. In fact, you can see how it is inspired by the 812 Superfast and even in a way the F8 Tributo with this slight undercut that it has underneath the rear lip spoiler and then those quad round tail lights familiar from many of the latest Ferrari models matching with the quad round exhaust tailpipes that you have down in the diffuser. Again, with a wealth of carbon fiber down there, all of the shapes, contours and textures that the car actually has back there. There's quite a lot going on, but it creates, I think, a very sporty but elegant appearance and obviously the color choice of this in the in the light metallic silver fits with that stylish elegant Grand Tora vibe which is something quite unusual for the special projects. Now special projects cars don't tend to be based on the limited edition models the likes of F12 TDFs or 458 Speciales or let's say 12 Competizioni's maybe there will be in the future these tend to be based on the main Ferrari models but allowing the customers to be creative to pitch the ideas to Ferrari and worked directly with their design and styling teams to be able to create the car. And that's one of the things I always find fascinating about something like the BR20 is that this has been created by the customer to their desires. For example, Ferrari might have pitched a few ideas, they'll have had a discussion meeting, they'll have gone through what kind of thing they would like to create, then there'll be some sketches, some first designs, some things, some things to be able to work through, to perhaps bounce ideas back and forth, and then every little detail, like the DRLs up front, like the taillights at the back, and their placements can all be discussed and perfected to meet exactly the client's requirements, which is something that we more know from the older days of automotive, the coach building era. And Ferrari really started with these special projects, I suppose 15 or so years ago, and they make it so bespoke. And obviously that carries a price tag. They are rumored to cost between let's say two and five million pounds, dollars, euros, whatever currency it might be, depending on the number of modifications, the challenges that are going to be faced for the headlights, for the glass, for all of those different elements, obviously to make it a road car at the end of the day. But they were one of the first to do it. They only offer these cars to the very important customers, to the people that are really part of the brand that understand the passion of Ferrari. You can't walk into your dealer and ask, can I have a special project? You have to wait until that opportunity is presented to you to have proven that you're part of Ferrari. And that's 
really quite a, a club thing, right? It's quite a special opportunity. It's not even like, say, the new Icona model we're expecting to see very soon, the follow-up to the Ferrari Monza, the SP1 and the SP2. The second of the five Icona models is due to be launched, I believe, within a week or so. So we might be seeing a first look of that very soon as well. But the special projects are really the ultimate in bespoke. We've seen a number of different manufacturers doing this recently. Lamborghini, for example, have created a couple, the SC18 Alston, the SC20, for example, Rolls-Royce have done the swept tail and the boat tail. Aston Martin have created the Victor based on an old 177 chassis. But this is where it's fascinating because these are cars that, yes, in the earlier days of one-offs 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it was easier to keep track of them all. But the so, I think, impressive thing for me about it is how these cars are all created one-off for the customer. And I think there is an expectation with Ferrari that if you've bought a special project and you've been allowed to do this process, that you keep the car. They are not for sale. They are one-offs. I think there have been a few small exceptions where there have been multiple. For example, the F12 TRS. There were two of those made. The effectively F12 Berlinetta with no roof with a cut-off Barchetta-style windscreen, which always looked truly impressive. And those have been seen around the world, in fact. They've been to a lot of different events, but generally they're one-offs. And the process is very involving. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not like walking into a dealer and specking a car and it turns up in three months. These processes take two to five years, depending what's involved. And that's why, for example, we see the BR20 launching now based on the GTC4 Lusso, which of course went out of production a while back. So that's why the car arrives now. But the other thing about being based on the Lusso V12 is that means this is a four-wheel drive, two-seat Ferrari Grand Touring Coupe, which doesn't really exist in the lineup. The 812 Superfast is of course a two-seat rear-wheel drive, 800 horsepower car, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit unique, and that's why I quite like what the customer has done with this. Anyway, I wanted to share with you a first look today at the BR20 to have a quick run through. There's very little information about it at this stage, but who knows, maybe one day in the future, I'll be able to see it somewhere around the world. At this stage, I don't know exactly where it's gonna be heading. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the first look at the BR20, and I'll see you again, perhaps, for this next Icona very, very soon. Cheers.